previously on the Downscaling Chronicles. The OSSC Pro is right around the corner, and we've already had a sample of its power in the form of the DEX. An add-on for the DE10 Nano, which achieved a 240p downscale by simply deleting a set of lights. Zero lag 480p downscaling through VGA did cause frequent hiccups, which Marcus advised a slight modification to the decks as a fix, but then the board should be removed when using the DE10 as a mister, which I'll choose to forego the 480p input for the sake of convenience, which left 720p as the go-to input resolution taking two frames of lag to perfectly restore 240p upscaled video, dividing each scan line to precision. But downscaling most other content resulted in vertical shimmer and jaggies. If you have a mister and you're prepared to make some compromises, you lose! Then the DEX is a very competent downscaler. But for those without a DE10 that have the budget for something, a little more plug and play, there's the RetroTINK 5X Pro. Mike Chi's sophisticated RetroTINK line multipliers have been a godsend for retro gamers to bring our consoles of old into the modern era of flat panels. Even with the RetroTINK 4K on the horizon, the TINK 5X will continue to be a crucial piece in many setups. And a small minority like myself may be using its advanced features to downscale modern consoles to a 15kHz CRT. Downscaling is not a supported feature, and rather a gift from Mike, and like the DEX, it crudely line deletes to achieve 240p. And if you've been keeping up with the series, then you might already have an idea of the benefits and disadvantages of line deletion. So let's not be too critical that the one feature I'm focusing on isn't expected to be completely optimized. I will also state that my RetroTINK 5X was a private purchase and this is not a sponsored review. I'm on the most current official firmware, 3.71 as of October 2023. I followed the update guide on the RetroTINK's website and it's a pretty simple process. Install the driver and update tool, download the firmware, then hold down the menu button on the RetroTINK as you plug in the USB cable. The red LED light indicates its body is ready, so open the update tool and this device should now show. Select the firmware and flash it to the 5X. The SCART port accepts as high as 31 kilohertz with combined sync, but the component input will accept up to 720p. So to input HDMI for downscaling, I'm using a lagless Porter HDMI to component converter, which purely converts digital to analog without scaling. The console's HDMI signal goes into the powered HDMI to component converter, and then outputs component to the RetroTIC. The digital video output goes through an HDMI to VGA converter, and finally the HV sync is passively combined to output analog RGBS to the CRT. You'll only need to do the setup once if you want to use the TINK 5X for downscaling. Hook it up to a 1080p display, go into the OSD option and say yes to advanced res. Now hook up an HDMI console to the HDMI to component converter in 720 or 480p. But beware that it won't accept 50Hz 576p back out to the output resolutions where you'll see 240p and 480i. Select either and if your HD display won't handle 240p, then you'll need to complete the setup on a CRT without powering off the tink. In H sampling, I changed the preset to generic 16x9. Then save the profile and go back to the OSD menu to make sure that the startup profile matches the one that you just saved. From here on, it'll always boot into downscaling mode. First thing is an isolated test to show that the HDMI to component converter doesn't add any lag. 
and the CRT starts drawing the frame at the top left, where the Time Sleuth's photo sensor reads zero when outputting a 720 and 480p signal. So now running these resolutions through the 5X, 480p down to 240p had zero to one frames of rolling lag. But it only got better from here, as 480p to 480i had an impressive 3 milliseconds of steady lag. 720 down to 240p and 480i were also only 3 milliseconds, beating the decks in the same resolution by 2 whole frames, making it the fastest 720p downscaler that I've seen. By default, the Tink 5X's 15kHz downscale is overscanned. The horizontal width won't shrink below the starting value and the vertical squeeze just pulled everything down whilst ruining the vertical scale. And this was slightly more pronounced when inputting a 480p resolution. In contrast, I could adjust the picture on the decks to display the full 720p downscale test pattern. And that's without adjusting the BVM's geometry. Although it's a complete non-issue on my widescreen CRT. Displaying any pattern with the Dreamcast test suite in 480p down to 240p resulted in a perfect downscale by dropping every second line. In a similar fashion, 720p is downscaled by keeping one out of three lines to achieve 240p which should be perfect for games drawn in 240p that were line tripled. But as I found out, 720p is stretched vertically prior to downscaling. So those one out of three lines that are drawn for 240p splay over two scan lines at regular intervals. Now to be fair, the DEX does the exact same thing, just not by default as it also outputs an aspect preserving 240p so that circles stay round, which is why the DEX precisely deleted two out of the 720p's three lines, which caused Mario's mustache to go missing. For Super Mario Maker on the Wii U in 720p down to 240p, the RetroTink's vertical stretch almost resembles averaging two lines to create another, but in actuality, it isn't. As I move the picture vertically, you can see how the two rows that make up Mario's hat divide into both the sky above and his forehead below. The uneven vertical landing, which exaggerates some of Mario's features, only adds to the stereotype that us Italians have generous noses. Turkey neck aside, this was about the most accurate proportion I could get Mario to look. Line deleting 720p for these games that weren't originally drawn in 240p will also cause organized and linear objects to shimmer. Hence why downscaling Streets of Rage 4 also doesn't translate so well. Vertical movements cause the mesh gate and floor tiles to crawl, and it really withdraws the immersion of playing a modern retro game in 240p and downscaling from 480p looked much the same. The picture on the Corio 2 TV1750 is however softer due to its blending of vertical lines, but helps to keep the art looking static where it doesn't take away from the action. And this is where you gotta pick your poison when choosing a downscaler. You can get a sharper picture, but vertical shimmer, or a softer video that hides the downscaling artifacts. Just food for thought. To date, there's still no official way to output 15 kilohertz from the analog pocket when docked. And I wondered if maybe the RetroTINK could do the downscaling for a seamless CRT dock and go experience. For some reason, the TINK 5X couldn't properly display the dock's 480p video but 720p works just fine. The Tink's horizontal size controls worked really well to fill the entire screen, and I also gave the picture a slight gamma boost. But the uneven vertical scaling was still an issue. And shimmer me timbers, 
if you were hoping the pocket paired with the RetroTink 5X could be a sort of Mr. Switch, I'm sorry to break it to you, but keep holding out for Analog's official DAC support. All of these artifacts from uneven vertical scaling is really only a factor when sprites are small and repetitive. As for Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection on the Nintendo Switch, the large sprites, complex 2D art, and little use of vertical panning hides the uneven vertical landing of 720p downscaling fairly well, but it's still there if you're keen enough to spot it, both on the RetroTINK and the DEX. I was hopeful that 480p input would emit the uneven scale, but it didn't. And I can only assume that the Dreamcast was perfectly downscaled from 480p because it wasn't outputting 16x9, unlike the Switch. So then I was curious to test another game in case Street Fighter was just a bad conversion. But Metal Slug does much the same. Whereas it looks properly scaled in 720p on my LCD projector. Street Fighter is also a practical example of the vertical overscan, and the retro tint can pull it down at the expense of shaving some of the picture at the bottom. And the decks with the same 4x3 stretching was able to show more of the relevant field of view. Displayed next to the same arcade core on the Mr. FPGA, the RetroTINK has a slightly softer image compared to the DEX, and apart from the overly bright analog output on the Mr, they all look fairly similar. The bulk of modern content that I downscale are 16x9 remastered retro games, as that's where my widescreen CRT really shines making the whole aspect ratio nuances of downscaling a non-issue. And I'll take playing a widescreen classic with modern controls over the original any day. I just wish these 15kHz behemoths were more readily available for everyone else to experience. Just like the DEX, 3D content with geometric shapes also don't translate so well into 40p and the Koryu's softer line blending acts as a sort of smoothing filter for a more fluid picture. 480i downscaling on the RetroTINK is a somewhat middle ground that still retains a decent level of sharpness without cutting the eyeballs. For the complex and more realistic backgrounds in Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, the game plays exceptionally well. Downscaling to 480i bumps the vertical resolution to where text is much more readable, and if there were jaggies on simple structures, they weren't so noticeable when playing from the couch. But then there's some games like Pokemon Sword and Shield that have a mixture of static objects and basic geometry in a 3D environment, which is a recipe for widespread combing, from NPCs to the relatively simple environment and it's a scenario that even the Koryu can't remedy. Unless staying in the wilderness catching Pokemon, I'd probably skip downscaling altogether and just play in handheld mode. It may seem trivial, but I'll occasionally watch a downscaled movie or series on my CRT. And yes, there's a huge projector screen right beside it. But when the content feels right, 480i looks super clean, and for Dragon Ball Super, arguably more natural. It may seem that I focused more on the negative aspects of the 5X's downscaling, but as I already praised the benefits of line deletion in the previous episode, and echoed most of them here, there wasn't much new ground to cover. I do really love the RetroTINK 5X, and although it's a costly purchase as a dedicated downscaler, just remember that it is an experimental feature that Mike threw in as a freebie. 240p restoration for 3 times upscaled games doesn't translate as well as I hoped, and if you can overlook the jaggies, vertical shimmer, and potential overscan on a 4x3 display, it's still a great downscaler. Maybe not a flawless victory, but that essential zero lag is enough for me to keep using the RetroTINK 5X for the time being.
to see if maybe I can learn to love the Jaggies and Shimmer. At this point, the features I can see toppling the Retrotink 5X is a selectable bilinear smoothing filter and a low lag 1080p downscale. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed for the next episode. Thanks all for watching and happy gaming.